the service of worship here on August 20th. Might be the warmest Sunday of the year, but it is August, it is the Midwest, so we'll all just buckle up and get through the few days. By this time next week, it'll be back to lovely, you know, low 80s, so yay. Um, I'm Reverend Dr. Renee Whitaker. We thank Barb Gossett, our organist, for getting this started this morning. Gene Sturman is going to be our liturgist. Nathan Miner is back there. He's actually training Wes Hunt on the sight and sound, so that, well, I guess, mostly sound, and so that we have double duties. We have people to fill in for each other and or back each other up along the way, so that's exciting. And, oh, this has been a busy week around here. Um, you can see the names of all the people who've helped all the landscaping around there. And I know Jeff said on Friday, he said, well, he's just going to be here all week at water, or all week long watering to help offset the heat. So you'll probably see him nowhere else but out there in the yard, one side and then the other. Um, and the news will have a fall rugged sale on September 22nd, 23rd. So get those piles going around your house. And then it looks like September 17th is set aside for a day to bring things in. The morning Circle is going to meet at the Old Dairy for lunch on Thursday. And I'm going to Zoom Presbytery because I don't want to drive all that way. And um, we've started the journey with white, me and white supremacy, if anybody wants to join us. I'm going really slow because I have other things I have to think about. And so if you want to join us, there will be plenty of time to catch up with us along the way. With those announcements, I'll invite us to stand and share in our call to worship. Give thanks to God and make God's deeds known among the people. Sing praises to God. Tell of God's marvelous works. Let our hearts and minds rejoice in the wonder of May we remember those witnesses of faith who have gone before us. Offer thanksgiving to God for brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us lift up our voices in praise. Let us worship God.
reminds us that no one is without sin. All have found, fallen short of God's glory. At the same time, the Bible promises us that through Christ we are forgiven. As we pray together our prayer of confession, may our hearts be prepared to accept God's forgiveness and mercy. Let us pray. God of glory, glory we confess that all is not well with us. us. We are weary from our words and weighed down by our grief. The trivialities of life distract us when we forget to pray or study your word. The burdens we carry are heavy, but we forget that you are with us each day. Remind us of your constant presence. Send your spirit to renew your calling within us and relieve us from our worries. Refresh our energy and restore our souls, that we might once again offer thanks and praise in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the good news. All who truly repent will know the love of Christ that surpasses all understanding. We are rescued, delivered, and restored to the fullness of life. Accept the forgiveness that is offered and receive a new life in Christ, that you may be filled with peace. Amen. Our heads in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we have come before you with our joys and sorrows in our hearts and minds. We ask you to help us make space to hear and listen for your word so that our lives may be renewed and transformed. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now this morning, we're going to have 15 verses of scripture. It carries us further into the story of Joseph and his brothers. You may remember last week that his older brothers didn't like it, that he had a dream and a coat, and they threw him in a well. And then, instead of killing him, they sold him to who knows who, and he ended up in Egypt. And so now the years have passed, and we hear how the story unfolds. Reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 45, beginning with the first verse. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him. When Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, 
and the house of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, dismayed as they were at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant of the earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God, who has made me a father to Pharaoh, and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Here ends the reading and speaking of God. Fifteen verses of scripture. That is what we have heard this morning. If we didn't know any of the story of what went before, would those fifteen verses make any sense to us today? For the story of Joseph and his brothers is actually begun as a story of deceit and betrayal. Within its pages, it speaks of famine and feast. It offers heartache and hope. But today, we are left with just 15 verses plucked out of the many pages and lots of stories. In thinking about this sermon, this question came to mind, if you were to tell the story of your life, what 15 verses would you choose? It's an interesting question to ponder, isn't it? Could you even begin to tell the story of your life in just 15 verses? Perhaps to make it easier, which 15 verses would you choose based on the past couple of months or so. That's a rather hard decision, isn't it? The 15 verses, you know, start you off, you can think of your own while I'm saying mine, but I thought of 15 verses, they might go something like this. I preached a lot of sermons. I ate lunch in many different places. I visited with my family on Mother's Day, which now seems like 100 years ago. I visited friends in St. Louis. I took a ride on a riverboat in Hannibal. It was a lovely day. I prayed in many and varied places. I took a lot of pictures of Fred and his friends. I went for so many walks in Macomb and other locations. I really like to walk outside on a lovely day. I did a lot of yoga. I complained about the heat and the smoke from the wildfires on more than one occasion. I went to lunch some more. I watched the entire Ted Lasso series a couple of times. I went to see the Barbie movie with a friend in Michigan. I visited Meyer Gardens in Grand Rapids, Michigan. You should go if you've never been there. And I had a lovely time visiting with friends in Ohio while driving quite a few miles 
Okay, that's 15 verses of my life since Mother's Day 2023. Is it enough? Is it more than you wanted to know? I mean, what happened before or after or even somewhere in the middle to help one understand how weird the weather has been or the tragedies that occurred in many and varied places? I wasn't in the middle of any of them, you know, thank you. What happened in our lives just this past week? Make us who we are today. And what will happen tomorrow that will shape how we will become? Now, back to today's text. As we read the passage more closely, what do we learn? Joseph wept when he met his brothers in the household of the Egyptian Pharaoh after a long separation. He recognized his brother's distress at this meeting because they had sold him to foreigners so many years ago. Now Joseph has a place of honor as a trusted advisor of the Pharaoh, and through the years he had been offered power and prosperity, mostly, I think, because of the dreams that he had that came true. We also learn that there's been famine in the land for two years, and there's no end in sight. The text tells us that because of his faith in God, Joseph is now able to forgive his brothers for their past actions. Joseph steadily believes that God has used an extraordinarily difficult situation to help him be in that place at that time where he could save his family and so many others from starvation. We hear the name of Benjamin, somebody brought that up in the last week, who is a younger brother, but we really don't know from those verses what exactly Benjamin has done in the ensuing years. We learn also that Joseph cannot wait to be reunited with his father. And then we know Joseph weeps because he is so happy to see his brothers again. These are some of the basic facts we have taken from the text. It is up to the reader to place value on what the text actually tells us. As 21st century Christians, we come to this text from the place of three or 4,000 years of history mediating our judgment. We come to this text through a particular theological lens. We come as disciples of Christ who strive to understand how to make our way forward in this world, even how to seek and to offer forgiveness. Now what we do not learn is how much Joseph may have fretted over his response, of what his response would be when and if he ever saw his brothers again. We don't know what trials and tribulations he endured to earn his place in Pharaoh's palace. We don't learn what challenges his brothers have faced along the way either. We don't know how Joseph gained the hope and wisdom that he shared along the way. We do learn why the brothers were so distressed, even beyond their actions, to throw Joseph in a pit. Now, to learn more about the story, you have to include Genesis chapters 40 through 44. Eh, we won't do that today. I'll leave it up to you to read more if you're interested. But the story of Joseph and his brothers raises a lot of questions for the 21st century reader. These are questions about good and evil, how we live with the consequences of our actions and the process of forgiveness. More than once we have asked ourselves or others, how can we determine what is good and what is evil? How do we decide how to address either of these things? I don't think we have near enough conversations in our world to talk about these things when all this different, chaotic, seemingly not so good stuff is happening and we hear about it all the time, but yet nobody really tries to understand, is it good or is it evil? Is it beneficial or is it harmful? According
turning to David Bloom's call and his book entitled The Monology of Good and Evil, we are reminded that both acts of good and acts of evil are very commonplace, or as he names it, banal. Human sin is universal, but human kindness is universal as well. And we are all accountable to one another and to God for the actions that we choose. It is us as human beings to name what is good and what is evil. That's why philosophers and clergy and people of all kinds have struggled with that through the years. We just don't get those conversations out in the larger world. We've gone down to the lowest common denominator. Oh my gosh, we're excited because something has happened. You know, that doesn't help us in any way to just scream at people and think everything is the worst thing that's ever going to happen. Because we know that's not true. We've had some terrible things happen to people around the world in the last forever. But every single tornado isn't the worst. Every hurricane isn't the biggest. Every, every everything isn't always more than it is. And we act as though it affects all of us. But we aren't grieving the loss, or some of you may be, of people in other parts of the world, unless it's personal. We get so confused about that in this day and age. And then we ask ourselves again and again, how do we discern what is good and what is evil in the world? I think we ask ourselves, does an action encourage respect for others? Does an action consider both self and others? Does an action show mutual affection or honor? Is an action worthy of praise? Is an action truthful or honorable or commendable? I mean, these are often not easy questions to answer. And yet, that's what we're called to do as human beings, as people, as Christians. <coughs> Sometimes we are called to be courageous and stand up for something that we know is wrong. <coughs> Nobody said that was easy to do, did they? And in this morning's text, though, Joseph does not sit and reflect on the evil that was done to him. I would posit he had lots of time to do that over the years. And as you read chapters 42, 43, and 44, you will find he did not just let his brothers off the hook. He did not forgive what had been done to him. He never simply said, ah, oh, no big deal. We do that too often. But because enough time had passed, he was able to put things in a larger perspective. And he learned to respond. I don't know how, but he learned to respond with goodness and forgiveness. And maybe because he really wanted to see his father, Joseph offered to save all of them from starvation. And of course, if he knew he had a little brother named Benjamin, Benjamin wasn't involved in any of it before then. And yet he didn't simply invite them to move into his house. He let them settle in the land of Goshen. He helped them find a safe space, but he still didn't, you know, he remembered what they had done. Maybe you don't trust completely, but you don't want anything bad to happen. I mean, we might wonder how the brothers felt through it all. Was there any residual anger because their little brother was successful? Were they, you know, not happy because they ha now had to rely once more on his mercy so that they could live anew? Could they possibly see God at work in the larger story? Or were they glad that they just had to a chance to survive a famine? We don't know the answer to any of those questions. Perhaps these are the questions we have to ask ourselves as we see 
stand under the grace and mercy of God. Do we see God at the work in the larger story of our lives, not simply decide we're going to blame God when something bad happens? But our lives are so complex. God gave us free will. We can choose the good or the evil. Are we grateful when we are given the chance to live again after an operation? Maybe we had an accident. Maybe our marriage fell apart or someone you love died and we get to start again. But we get to start again every day if we remember that. As long as we are alive, there's always more to the story. Another 15 verses will unfold. And another and another. There is always more to our story and our story if we could just have the courage to see beyond our nose. That's what they say, isn't it? And are we ready to believe that God is working in the midst of all of our stories? But even when we receive the news that a good friend or someone is ill, or unrest meets our eyes. How does our belief in God's larger story of life and love play out each day? How does our Christian faith support us as we move ahead and make choices? In the midst of 15 verses, there are always many other events and people who intertwine with all of us along the way. I mean, we all know that there was a horrific fire in Hawaii. For those who have visited and loved that place, it has a different meaning than it does for someone like me who's never been there. I'll never mourn that I can't go back. I have other places I mourn that I can't go back, but it won't be there. We can have empathy for all the horror and the lives that have been lost and how difficult it will be for people to rebuild and to find life anew. But it doesn't affect us in the same way as if this whole neighborhood suddenly was gone. That would affect us in a much more personal way and would be a different kind of tragedy. Now, you know, since those 15 days that I've talked about, or 15 things since Mother's Day, think about the world around here. Babies were born and people have died. We laughed and we wept at the events in our lives. Here in this place, Barb and Missy and I in particular prepared to worship every Sunday. And you decided whether or not you were going to come and join the congregation or whether you were going to be away or whatever was happening in your life that day. And the weather, I don't know, did it turn from spring to summer and then spring and then summer? It's been a weird one all summer. You know, and, and when the weather changed, we changed the clothes that we wear so much. The Giving Gardens now has grown into beautiful and delicious treats. Most of us had nothing to do with that. And even Nathan and the others who worked in it could only do what they could do and then let up God take a rest. And there were people out there all the time. They don't know what's happening inside, but they know they like the tomatoes or the kale or the zinnias or whatever other goodies are here and at the other Giving Gardens. I mean, remember? thousand years ago, we gathered in the fellowship hall for the spring gathering because it was too hot outside. The morning circle gathered and shared delicious goodies. The storm blew through the town and our lives on more than one occasion. We could say gorgeous music has filled our sanctuary each Sunday. War raged on in Ukraine and the Middle East and Niger and other places around the world. We all ate many meals at our home or out in somewhere else. And we 
pray for others along the way. And then on August 20th, we gathered for worship and we remembered Joseph and his brothers. We sang and prayed and said, thank you, God, for bringing us here on this day. Those weren't quite 15 verses because there was always more to share. So today, what verses of your life will you choose to share? What you select will help you be prepared to go where life leads as the days unfold. And soon summer will turn to fall with new challenges and new blessings. All as we wait to behold the glory of life here on earth. Let us bow our heads. Holy and gracious God, you all give us time. Time to learn who we are and who we want to be. Time to share with others. Time to celebrate and time to grieve. It is an extraordinary world that we live in and sometimes we forget. Help us always remember the larger story of our lives, the joys and the sorrows always to remember that you are there in the midst, holding us, giving us strength and courage. Take another 15 steps and see how life will unfold. And we pray all these things in the name of Christ, who has come and will come again. Amen. <laughs>
His words are in some ways more powerful than the whole song together. So it's like, you might want to go back and read the words, but he sort of carries us through it anyway. And so if we come to this time of prayer, so many are facing tragedy. Grace there in Southern California, or at least the hurricane has gone down to a number one instead of a number four. So they'll probably just get a lot of rain, which they need, but maybe hopefully not too much. And then other places in the world, it's so complex. So we remember them in ways that we can on this day. Let us pray. Holy God, we seek you in this time of worship as we lift our voices in song and prayer. Remind us that you are with us always today and in times of great challenge or despair. Help us to know you are in the midst of our daily activities, calling us to goodness and hope. Gracious God, we know that you are present in every act of gener generosity and mercy shared between people of all ages. You're present when we share words of kindness. You're present when we stand with friends who are grieving. You're present when we are confused as to which way to go. You're present, leading us on the way and in the midst of every step. Help us remember. Glorious God, help us remember that you are present in every story we share with our family and our friends. Help us to choose words of compassion and memories of great joy, even in the midst of times of less. Help us to carry stories of the past that help you shape us and shape others in ways that bring meaning to all of our lives. May we be reminded that you are in our stories of challenge as well. May we learn from our mistakes and strive to learn new pathways on this journey of life. Here in the midst of this family of faith, there are untold stories and songs to be waiting, waiting to be told and to be sung. Surround us with your creative power to find beauty each day remember that our first and last gift is the gift of life. Help us to honor this gift as we pray for those who care for us in our weakness. Walk with those who build us up in courage and strength. And in a time of silence, let us pray for others who may need a path through healing, grieving, or facing a difficult spirit to everyone we name before you in our hearts. Now with our stories of celebration and challenges and your creation around us, may we share the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, 
which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, gratitude for life and for God's forgiving and healing <coughs> grace. How can we repay the many gifts we have received along the way? Let us give thanks for our gifts as we stand together and share in the doxology as our offerings are brought forward. <laughs> Spirit will be with each one of you now and forever. <laughs> 